By all accounts, Tom Walter, the CEO of Tasty Catering, is a kind and compassionate leader. But he says he wasn't always that way. In this short video, part of our Champions of Responsible Business video series, Tom shares the story of the day he decided to stop yelling. And he also tells us the positive financial impact that's had on his company. I've been a command and control leader for 35 years and uh, during that time I decided that I knew what was right it was my responsibility, not my privilege as much as my responsibility to lead in the fashion that I was taught by my father, World War II Army Sergeant, an engineer, quality person. And uh, then one day uh, my staff came to me, the leaders that I had uh, chosen to take over the business that were started with us at the age of 15. And uh, they came back to us as college graduates and they said uh, we want to work full time and they were in positions of leadership and I knew I could trust this company to last for 30 years under their helm. But they said to me one day, we can't stand your yelling and we can't stand your brother's yelling and we can't stand coming into this environment and spending the first 30 minutes trying to figure out which mood you're in, only to have someone blow up in the middle of the day and destroy everybody's mood. And either you change or we're leaving. And that was the aha moment, and I said, I can't change. I have to let go. I have to let them tell me what to do. And I asked them what their suggestion was, and they suggested we establish a culture driven by employees, created by employees, driven by employees, and protected by me. And that culture was the, the aha moment, the change of our company. It increased the value, increased the productivity, increased the happiness, and eliminated all the negativity from the company. I asked, uh, I asked these two leaders, one was our CFO and the other one was our marketing person, our communications person, and our logistics person. I asked them, what do we change to? What do, how do we change cultures? I've existed this way all my life. How do we go to a culture-driven organizational behavior? And they said, we're going to adopt a book and we're going to adopt a, a culture that we all believe in. And they picked out Good to Great by Jim Collins because it came in Spanish and English, luckily for Mr. Collins. Uh, so everybody in the company read the book Good to Great, and they selected eight members from the company who they believed had the basic morals and ethics, or great morals and ethics. And uh, those eight people became the Good to Great Council. And they told the owners we could only have one vote, and during the development of the, the culture, we had to sit in the corner of the room. So we sat with our backs against the wall and let them decide the fate of the company. And it was one of the scariest days of my life. But when they said our first core value was we will always be moral, ethical, and legal, I almost fell out of my chair because my father had preached to us, my two partners are my brothers, had preached to us all our lives, if you're always moral and ethical, you never have to worry about being legal. And I said, the spirit of my dad's in this room. The second one is, the second core value, they said, we'll treat all with respect. And I thought, there goes our employee handbook. There goes our human resources. We don't need it anymore. Because if we're moral and ethical and we treat people with respect, we're finished. As they listed the next seven core values, I'm sitting there going over in my head. I'm thinking, this is Thomas Aquinas. This is uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. These are basic human functions, they're saying. We're at quality in everything we do, competitiveness, a strong desire to be the best, the circle of discipline where we're responsible but free within that circle of discipline. Well, that is right from Immanuel Kant. And they had no idea that great philosophers had said this. This was just human nature saying this is my need to exist in a free and loving spirit. So the basic of culture is culture is uh, culture in the workplace is where everybody understands how decision are made, what the decision-making process is, and how those priorities are identified. They understand how people should treat each other. And when the decision-making process is broken or people aren't getting along, it means the culture is not being followed. So about uh, two years after we instituted this culture, we had won many awards for this locally, state, nationally. Uh, our marketing department gave me a new title. I looked at my business card and I was now chief culture officer, so it was my job to enforce the culture which really isn't a hard job at all. But a difficult part of enforcing the culture was being able to make sure it was front of mind. So we borrowed some tips from 12-step programs, and we read the culture statements before every meeting of three people or more. So it's always front of mind. So now there is no more raising of voices, there is no more yelling, and people peacefully go about doing their work, and the company gets stronger and better and 
stronger, more profitable, and it turned the value of the company's culture has turned into profitability and sustainability, job security, and each family is becoming more wealthy.